Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. Today, we are joined by Yondin, who is joining us from Canada and is the founder of a digital marketing agency called Latched, uh, which focuses heavily on SEO uh, and, and has worked with a ton of big brands. You've scaled it to some pretty incredible numbers, well into the seven figures in your early 20s. So welcome to the pod, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. No worries. Um, what what got you started in the whole entrepreneurship digital marketing niche? Um, I think I've always been interested in uh, the online space. Like I was, oh, I remember seeing like the Ty Lopez kind of, you know, um, video in in the beginning. Yeah, and uh, I've been always interested, kind of in the the space like when i first started i was doing like you know some consulting and stuff like that for influencers um and whatnot but then that kind of got myself into getting some paid gigs with smaller businesses um and then yeah it's now a transition to a full-time gig for myself and uh, you know continuing to grow the team and uh yeah it's been uh you know very exciting yeah what got how do you get started i guess consulting influencers had you done stuff before that did you work for free to build up experience or yeah so like i used to do uh when i first started i was doing like kind of the instagram like growth hacking for followers um as well as like running some paid traffic for um some influencers it was like probably 2018 ish 2017 2018 yeah yeah solid one um one thing i noticed that's different about you compared to a lot of the other guests i've had on here is the fact that you haven't put a ton of time into building a big personal brand to get clients uh mm -hmm. how have you gone about going like getting clients without one do you just simply have cold outreach yeah. or great question uh there's you know there's a few things you can do like obviously um you know when you build a community like if you have a youtube channel or you have a podcast or um you know you're big on let's say i don't know twitter discord uh what or not what's up <laughs> tiktok whatever it is right like you have a community so for me yes I, I don't have a huge instagram following um i don't have a big youtube channel i don't have a youtube channel and any of that sort of stuff so uh what got me to let's say my first million was literally picking up the phone and doing what Sabri Subi said, call, yeah, <laughs> calling. So, and there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Like you know, um, so there's not a right or wrong way to do it. But for me, um, yes, I need to start focusing on my personal brand. Ironically, it's kind of funny. So this year, I'm kind of going to be focusing on that actually. Yeah, although I guess if you're getting awesome results with that one, then it's not as important. It's not as much of a rush. Yeah, I mean, I kind of felt like I didn't want to pull myself out there. I didn't really feel that confident in, in, in the sense of like, I didn't want to kind of come off as a bit too pretentious. Like there's a lot of people online that, you know, are they're, they look like they're doing huge things, but in reality, like they're not. So yeah. I just don't want to, I don't want to come off it as that. So you know, I have a lot of friends and family that are on social. So, you know, I got to be kind of careful. Well, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Don't want to be flexing on people and and so on. Just trying to be yeah, genuine yeah. with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do Do you think that's actually almost led into your success? The fact that you haven't focused on the personal brand and instead it can just focus on, you know, ringing like cold calls and then delivering the service. Or, uh, you know what? That's a good question. Like, I think for me, what's worked is like we've kind of built a name for ourselves like in the space so like whether it's one niche that you d you focus on or whatever it is like let's say you become i don't know the guy for like i don't know running ppc for like dealerships or something right you're that guy right so you can kind of put uh, build a name and, and and start doing that right by just shaking hands and start knowing people in the in the space and then once you do that then people start knowing you right so you don't necessarily need to have like a zillion followers on any of these social platforms um that helps right obviously but it's not a metric of let's say a business owner or, uh ceo of a company they don't really care they actually care about, like what clients do you work with not like oh 
you have like, you know, 10 million followers and this person has like a thousand or 500 or whatever. Right? So, yeah. Well, I mean, 10, 10 dealerships that know your name and trust you is better than, you know, a million people that follow you, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Random photos, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. What, um, so when it does come to building like a name for yourself, building an agency, what tips would you have for people that are trying to get into the agency space that are trying to sell services and, and, and build a business slash income that way? Yeah. I, you know what? I think being an entrepreneur and being a salesperson, they're great things, but, um, you know, if you're, let's say starting out, um, you really want to figure out like, what is it that you want to achieve? Right. A lot of people, don't have that clarity. They they want to just go into business and say, oh, you don't want to make a million dollars or make whatever it is or buy this. So the fact that people don't have the right mindset doesn't lead to having clarity. When they don't have clarity, they don't have the right action plan and the right roadmap to achieve these steps. So, you know, what I would tell people is like, like what do you really want? Like, you know, if, if it's like, you know, if you were to start out, like if you, let's say, do sales, then you learn the ropes of selling B2B. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? There's a lot of people that are making, I don't know, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 grand, whatever it is per month to selling, right? And there's no, you should, people shouldn't be ashamed, but they, they have this like stigma of like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I get to do it myself. And they're making like two grand a month or five grand or 10 grand, whatever it is, right? So, you know, I would yeah. say like, you know, figure out what it, what's your strong suits, right? And use it to your advantage. If you're good at sales, you know, use it to your advantage. And, um, if it's marketing, you know, build out funnels, do whatever it is. Right. Um, so, but you know, I, I would say like for the people starting out, like figure out what, what you really want. And the, that actually leads to my next point, right? Some people want to build a lifestyle business and there's nothing wrong with that too. Right. You want to build, yeah. I don't know, like get the passive income lifestyle, whatever it is be on a beach in Thailand or whatever, Jamaica or I don't know, wherever Europe, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, figure out what that, what that means. Right. Or, or do you want to keep grinding and, and growing and then maybe sell the business or, you know, grow to a like hundred staff or whatever it is. Right. So, um, that's also really important as well. I, I find that too, because for me, when I first started, um, yes, I wanted to make millions of dollars, but, now and and sell for whatever act it is but now for me i think that's really changed a bit i i i actually want to keep continuing to grow the business uh get better team members all that sort of stuff so um yeah that's really good advice and i think an interesting point just almost like deciding why you're why you're going into this i think a lot of people i guess naturally just jump into starting their own thing as they think that's the best way they can get to a good income but like you say you could just learn sales and sell for someone or learn i don't know learn how to code and go get 200k a year for a tech company or whatever yeah yeah there's nothing wrong with that right but i think it's this maybe this thing in people's heads that ingrained that oh you know i don't want to work for anyone there's nothing wrong with that if you if you do that you know everyone starts off as there's a kind of a saying everyone starts off as an employee and and the, you know becomes a the boss or whatever so you know for yeah. me i remember i was like 21 22 i was selling uh auto loans to people on the phone <laughs> with really yeah. high interest rates so um that and i was really good at that actually so um that actually kind of helped me you know in terms of uh, the sales aspect and, and what's what so but you know um yeah, there's not, there's no, there's, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, but it's just kind of figuring it out. But uh, the other thing as well is entrepreneurship is not a guarantee and there's a lot of risk as well. Yeah. So, Do you think you know, that doing sales before you started your business helped like a lot with, with your success? Cause what you went from 21, 22 doing sales by 24, you'd already built a seven, seven figure business. Do you think that yeah. played a big part in it? Uh, yeah, I think it did. Um, you want to really have the, the systems, right? Like, uh, businesses typically what happens is, um, 
a lot of people under, let's say, five hundred thousand, they want to, they care about the margins, you know, sixty, seventy percent, all that sort. But reality, uh, that the margins don't matter. What matters is, do you have a system that you can continue to scale, continue to get more clients, and have the best talent, right? The margins are for people maybe in like I don't know, coaching, whatever it is. But if you want to run a services-based business, you, you got to focus on bringing in good talent, right? And not care too much about you know profit margin, your revenue, all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah, I think I've noticed I've seen a lot of people do that where they're sort of first few hundred k, like they're trying to meet their own lifestyle needs, and so they're focused on profit margins, and then they get to that point where spending or, or pulling out an extra <clears throat> few grand isn't going to help their lifestyle and they then start putting it back all into their business to try and hire better people like you say build that side of things scale it scale it yeah, upwards. It's, it, it, it's it's like risk reward right it's like for for me when i first started out like i'm, I'm in my office here downtown vancouver commercial you know my business partners upstairs but uh i slept on the couch right and I didn't uh, have a place to stay per se, right? So that was yeah. a sacrifice I made. So, you know, a lot of people have to realize that there are the sacrifice. I know a lot, it's very glamour, glamorized or whatever, like the nice cars, the nice trips, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, right? Nice hotels, uh, watches, cars, you get the point. Um, but the reality is like people don't understand that you get into, uh, you know, you don't know if you can make the payroll. You don't know if you can, um, you know, the place to stay, afford certain things like rent and stuff like that. And right, so it it, it comes down to your risk, your risk tolerance too. Because entre real entrepreneurs, they'll be like, "Fuck it, I'm all in. Uh, I'm putting all my money at the state." It's it's almost like you know you're at the poker table and you're like, "I'm gonna put ten million on black." Right, the true entrepreneur will do that. The, the people that are not entrepreneurs, are, oh, you know, I'll put 50,000. Then yeah. again, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's just your risk level, your risk tolerance too, right? Some people want to invest every month to whatever it is and re retire with a few million at 55. So I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but it comes down to what do you want to sacrifice? Do you want to sacrifice and build something big uh, around your lifestyle? Or, or do you want to make it maybe, um, you know, just casual and be lean and, you know, have fun and, build the passive income or whatever it is right so almost doing that inner work to find out like what you're actually looking for and then once you've got that clarity like you say just diving in and chasing that path with full full force yeah exactly yeah yeah when um touching on like systems and so on when it comes to building systems in your business so it can scale what would be your best things that you've learned around that uh that you've picked up on from building them in your own business? Whether it be things you did well or things that you made mistakes on that you would then change? I think getting to my first million, I was a bit too hard on, like I cared a lot about being profitable, like too profitable and having too much cash. So I got a bit too comfortable, I'll be honest, but um, you gotta learn, if I were to go back, you know, you gotta learn at certain stages when there's some cash in the bank, start freeing up your time and delegating it. Now, don't go out and buy a Rolex or don't go out and do stupid shit with it, but like start, you know, hire that assistant or hire someone on part time. If it's not someone on part time, maybe an intern, whatever it is, start having those people. If, if you can't even afford that, go on Upwork, go on onlinejobs.ph, find someone for 500 bucks, build a list for you, whatever it is, right? There's tons of resources, there's tons of things out there that you can start doing in terms of freeing up your time that you don't want to do. I know some people are like, oh, you know, like the CEO isn't supposed to do this and that or whatever it is, but it is true, right? Like you eventually want to, you want to build a business, but you want to not have to require so much. You want to kind of be able to have the freedom of where like, if you go for vacation or whatever it is, you're not like, shit, I got to be there and all that sort of stuff, right? The, the systems are aligned, they're in place. And when yeah. you can jet off for two weeks in, in, in Cayman Islands or Bahamas or wherever, business still runs, right? Yeah, almost so like you're just me, working. Yeah, I made, the, I made the mistake of not hiring early enough. And that bit me in the ass. Bit us in the ass, for sure. Um, other things as well as 
hiring as well. How do you hire? Now, that's also another thing I can go on a rant for. <laughs> quality hires. How do you find quality hires? And, and all that sort of stuff. And, and um, lead generation is another thing. Like, um, you know, you, you do social media. Instagram is, I think, good for lead generation for businesses. A lot of people don't do it. They say, oh, use LinkedIn, use whatever. I think it comes down to like testing and seeing what works. So numbers say, oh, you know what? Just because LinkedIn didn't work for you doesn't mean it's not going to work for the person next to you because it might. Yeah. Right. It comes down to like, what is it that you're good at? Maybe some people build a great community and they do community based selling. They put a Slack channel, they put a Discord, everyone knows them and they start selling like that. Some people do that. It works, right? If you, yeah. I don't know if you have a course or something, right? Or um, Sam Ovens does that, like kind of community-based selling. But he, he ran a lot of paid ads for sure and, and grew his personal brand before. But um, Yeah. when um, I mean, you're probably at a different stage now, but um, when you're starting out or for people that are starting out, did you have a process about how you decided what you outsourced first? Like, did you have a way to rank like, you know, I'm going to outsource this first, this second, this third, or? To be honest, I did it. Now, if I were to go back, what I would do is figure out what is costing you the most amount of time and then figure out, okay, well, it's taking me, you know, let's say, let's say I'm running, I don't know, let's say I run an Instagram marketing agency or something, or let's say social media marketing agency. And I write the content out, I post the photos, I do the edits, what, all that sort of stuff, right? And let's say I have 10 clients pay me, I don't know, three grand a month, four grand a month. Let's say four grand a month. So 40K uh, a month, so let's say a year, 40K a month. So in the 40K a month, now how much time am I spending per each client? And how much time does that consist of on a daily basis, right? Now, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, 40K a month, that's great. Well, that's awesome. That's amazing. But you got to start figuring out how much is your time worth after, right? And then eventually we'll start, you'll start realizing my clients are not paying me enough. So I got to start working with, you know, bigger clients. And then clients are paying me five grand a month, 10 grand a month, 15, 20, whatever it is, right? So I think like, you know, you got to really, you know, if I were to go back, as, as mentioned, like figure out what takes up the most amount of time and what you don't want to do. There's certain things you don't want to do. Start outsourcing it right away. And if yep. you don't have the, the 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 capital to hire someone, onlinejobs.ph, Upwork, Fiverr. There's there's tons of, you know, you can go on, I don't know, Indeed in the Philippines and, and put a job posting, right? It's pretty easy, yeah. right? Yeah, there's a lot of options out there for people if they want to outsource 10 hours a week of admin work or creative work or whatever it might be. Like that is not going to cost much at all. Yeah, exactly. But then you figure out, like, what is your time worth? If it's worth the next amount, then why are you doing work, right? Now, if yeah. I asked myself that before, <laughs> um, you know, it would be a different question, but... Yeah, I remember saying, um, I mean, I've recently gone through Naval Ravikant's book again recently, and I think he he would just put an absurdly high price on his time, and then anything under that, he'd just find a way to delete it, delegate it, um, or, or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Yeah. yeah, pretty powerful. Now, when it came to choosing like the niche that you went into, like between SEO, social media marketing, like there's a lot of, I guess, online advertising avenues you can go down. What made you choose SEO and focus on that? Yeah, so why I think I cho we chose SEO was probably due to um, you want something where you can get reoccurring revenue. And SEO is something that you can get reoccurring revenue because there's a lot of different adjacent services that you can offer, right? Whether it's CRO uh, through Clavio, whether it's uh, technical SEO, on-page, off-page, whatever it is, right? Um, and, and then you, there's a full suite of services. It's almost like if I came into a resort and people, oh yeah, you know, we have a spa, we have a golf course here, you can have this. Versus if I just walk into a hotel and they're okay, well, here's your keys enjoy your your night right that hotel is probably yeah. like a couple hundred bucks the resort is going to cost me thousands because they're in the spa this right so it becomes the suite of services right so i felt like i could really genuinely impact my clients through having kind of an array of services within seo within the umbrella 
Um, now, can you do that for other services? Absolutely. You know, maybe you can do that for ads. Like, yes, you know, if you, you know, um, clients say like, oh, I don't know, like, can you do some content management for me too? Well, sure, I can do content with that. So whatever it is, find something that is in direct, um, you know, congruence. It's a direct parallel to the service offering that you have, right? You would recommend that over someone just focusing like all in on one specific service, just adding adding multiple offers that can help their clients? I think one offer would be good. It depends. Like some people just do email marketing and they make 50 yeah. grand a month. You know, you can do that, right? And some people just want to do the ads. You can do that. So it depends. You know, you got to first be a specialist and then you can be the generalist. You, you don't want to be an omni-channel agency that everyone does at the beginning like oh i'm gonna sell everything well that's yeah. great but you don't even have 30 paying clients right you don't get to make those decisions until there's cash in the door and then you have enough money where you can be like well i don't want to get clients this month because i have eight hundred thousand or five hundred thousand in the bank or whatever whatever, whatever it is yeah. for example. but so so that's the thing right like um, it's not a right or wrong answer but it comes down to um whatever you're offering like just making sure there's a that direct kind of parallel so yeah so almost have one core thing that gets you in the door and then add add on to that how you can bring more value to people after yeah absolutely figure out what what their pain points are right if it's the dealerships they keep they kept they kept asking me if i let's add a ppc agency and like oh yon and i also want you to shoot videos for me and i realized i'm like you know what six out of ten or or seven out of twelve of my clients are whatever it is, like 55% of my clients were asking me to do videos. Maybe I should also offer videos, video marketing services for those dealerships too. Hey, I know that I also offer the PPC and I can run the Google ads for you. What I'll also do is, are you interested in getting a video? Cause uh, me and my team could take care of that. Oh yeah. You know, we didn't think about that. That's lovely. Great. So it's going to be an X amount additionally. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Right. So this is an yes. example, right? So, when you start figuring out, when you start working specifically in one niche, you start figuring out what the problems are, right? And and people, you know, as a doctor, right, right? like or dentist, when you go in, you you get you're thinking, oh, I only got one filling, but then they tell you, oh, this is wrong with your teeth, all this sort of stuff. You need this, you got to get this removed, and they 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 upsell you, right? So that's yeah. kind of what you got to be. You got to be kind of that dentist, that specialist. The dentist never tells you. Oh, you know, we're going to offer you all this sort of stuff, right? Don't want to yeah, be about one thing. You, That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, no, that make that makes a lot of sense. You got one, um, get people in the door and then find out what other common pain points people have that you can, can upsell them, um, yeah, over absolutely. time. And I think that's honestly relevant for like anything online, like whether it's getting customers, whether it's even creating content on social media, like just get into get involved in your niche, find out what people are constantly asking about, what they're struggling with, write a blog yeah. post about it, create a reel about it, create a YouTube video. Like that's how you come up with content ideas. It's how you can find services for clients. It's pretty much everything is <laughs> just getting into it and doing it and then adjusting from that. Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to SEO specifically, do you think that more business owners should be putting a focus on it? Uh, cause it's honestly something that I haven't done anything of personally and know very little about. Yeah. I think inbound is definitely something that, um, is, is really important. I mean, or, organic is, is really good. It's the way to kind of do it because with organic, um, you know, you can, uh, get customers, you know, kind of forever, right? Like if you run a, yeah. you know, a paid traffic campaign, you stop that campaign, then your, your lead influx, your lead generation is going to kind of go to, go to waste, right? You build that that inbound strategy. You know that you're going to be getting X amount of, you know, book meetings or whatever it is per month, and it becomes more predictable. And let's face it, a lot of business owners want a predictable pipeline. They want better leads. They want better qualified opportunities. That's the same thing goes for entrepreneurs. It's the same damn thing. Now, how do you do that? You got to create an inbound strategy. Now, how do you create an inbound strategy? Well, it starts off with your website and it starts off with, I don't know, like, well, I can, I can kind of keep going on, but the, the, the crooks of it is that you got to build that inbound strategy. And once you have that inbound strategy, then it, it's, it's kind of predictable, right? So 
Um, I think it should be a focus on whatever niche you're in, to be honest, any, any niche. What, what would you say the first like handful of big things that, or maybe small things even that get a big result for businesses in that niche early on, like what start a website, put out some blog content. Is that good advice? Good place to start. Where would you suggest people start with that? I mean, you know, I would probably, you know, do a full audit and figure out what exactly is going on with my site. But, you yeah. know, there's not, you know, yes, that's kind of the, the way to do it. Some people do it, but um, SEO is, is, is uh, there's a lot of moving things and you got to kind of take a holistic approach and figure out, okay, well, out of all these things, what can I start doing now to start implementing it? it also costs a lot of money too. SEO is not cheap. So that's why a lot of people are, are like, bit hesitant to, to spend let's say 20 grand on an SEO or let's say, I don't know, five grand a month, whatever it is. Right. So, um, it, it takes time, right? It's, it's something that's long-term. It's like, I don't know. It's like buying um, in a mutual fund versus buying a high growth. I don't know, like an AMC stock or something, right? That AMC stock yeah. can go up and it can go down. Right. At any given time, we don't know. Same thing with paid ads. Right. Yeah. But, those, you know, like a Dow Jones ETF or um, what, whatever it is, right? You know, in, in, in 10 years, in 20 years, it'll pay you dividends. And in, in the sense of like, that's going to grow, that basket will continue to grow, right? Doesn't matter to the nature of the economy, it's going to continue to grow, right? The same thing with your investment in SEO. It's, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, right? You want to get yeah. customers on right away, then SEO is not the play. Right, it, it, SEO is congruent, like for a long-term play. But people that want to get customers right away, outbound prospecting, running paid ads at scale, you know, make a landing page, get traffic to the landing page, right? Yeah, it's a it's a long-term play, I guess, to build build results. Do you think people should be waiting till they're at a certain size before they go at that, or is that something they should be looking at really important day one? Um, good question. I think specifically like i think um you know most businesses that are at least at a million should probably start looking at seo i would probably say that probably maybe five hundred thousand to a million at least in that ballpark anything lower than that i wouldn't say it's worth it and then once you start doing five million a year you start looking at things like cro optimization right a lot of big companies will pay a lot of money for cro others, uh, even IT services, right? So, um, you know, as, as, as companies start to, to grow and start maturing, um, they can start allocating more financially to, to marketing, right? Yeah. CRO as in conversion rate optimization for people listening? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Conver conversion rate optimization. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like that first 500 K you're just hustling sales cold cold outreach and then after that you want to invest into the likes of seo to build that long term uh, yeah sorry are you saying this for an agency owner or are you saying this for a general business just for a business in general for a yeah just for a business i would probably maybe once you're at the 500k seo yeah. would be worthwhile would you say you know, that i just want to start doing as much as possible organically like as in like not having to maybe let's say spend all that money maybe doing it yourself or getting someone cheaper but yeah would you say for an agency owner like at the agency business model they should be doing it from a earlier stage oh absolutely i mean it's funny a lot of agencies they say they offer seo but their seo is like garbage yeah. so you know what i mean it, it's kind of like i mean like oh you know what i'm a i can offer you youtube consulting but i don't even have a channel so yeah. <laughs> you know it, it's it's uh it's pretty funny so that's why it's um it's a bit comical seeing a lot of these agencies these days that are like offering SEO, but when you go look up their agency, you don't, you can't even find them or you have trouble finding them. Yeah. Do you see a lot of agencies and agency owners that are like that, where they've sort of just whacked, whacked an agency together, trying to make a bunch, but don't have anything on the back end there that's sustainable? Absolutely. Yeah. I think I see a lot of agency owners like that are just churning and burning. They're, getting clients, losing clients, getting clients, losing clients. They're 
never at the stage where they built the right system and the foundation to to start scaling, right? What Most do you think? Just, yeah. Yeah. What do you, what do you think the difference is between those that have done that compared to those that are successful? Is it just systems that, that you've put in place or? Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot systems, uh, management, right? Like when, when you start getting to maybe like multi millions a year, you start figuring out, okay, well I, I gotta maybe take a profit hit or, uh, you know, a hit in my revenue and, and hire this person, hire a director and, you know, spending $200,000 a year for a director's salary is really expensive and also is uncomfortable for a lot of people, right? So when you start getting a bit uh, at these like higher levels, then then there's different problems that happen. There's maybe, let's say, some turbulence at the million dollar mark. Everything under that is like what are just regular people have agency problems, but then million, two to three million, five million, ten million. 10 million. It's a different kind of base camp, so I would say. Yeah, that people have to learn learn to go to the next step. Yeah. Well, how do you go about learning how to actually overcome those things? Do you hire coaches yourself? Are you more looking to hire people that work for you as opposed to like someone that's going to tell you what to do? Um, how do you go about that? Um, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, you can um, get a coach for sure. Like it's definitely good to get mentorship for – somebody that's in let's say your industry that has done x amount or whatever it is and learn what they've done like their systems right and obviously that's not cheap and my yeah. first mentor when i was like 23 i paid how much did i pay twenty four thousand or something twenty five yeah so it's quite a bit of money Far at the out. time right yeah so um it felt uncomfortable for sure um so and again but he helped me right so um there's mentors that like different stages and then you know like there's a lot of entrepreneurial groups you can join too you can pay to get in masterminds that helps too um but you start figuring out like at certain problems uh, or sorry at certain points revenue marks uh you run into certain types of issues um could be a lead gen issue could be um you know uh scope creep issue i ran into that scope creep issue um not too long ago. Whereas in like, I was getting scoped pretty hard clients asking for a lot. Right. Um, yeah. I should have figured that problem out a little bit sooner, but you know, thankfully it's kind of dealt with now, but I, that was like a big problem I had. Right. Or we had right in particular with, with scope creep and with SEO, like, you know, it's a lot of things that clients will ask for. So how do you, how do you go about, like identifying the right consultant coach mentor or talent to help you overcome that problem because i know like you see a lot of people online that are talking a big game about what they can coach or teach or deliver but is often not the case um so how do you find the good ones Some for the results be like you know like how much how much did you make show show it to me go on go on linkedin look up their company do they have employees? Where are their employees based out? Are they based in the Philippines and in India? Or are they based in like, you know, a developing country or where they're from, right? Like New Zealand or Australia, Canada, Europe. Figure out where they're based in. Is the company legit? All right. Well, you look it up, right? So there's a lot of things that you can do. That's kind of like your own due diligence. And then figuring out um, once that's all good, can I work with this coach? Is he likable? Like, will I get along with him? Okay, I do. I like him like his personality great so there's that potential match there right so and then is he in my industry so if i run i don't know ppc agency for the dealerships maybe <clears throat> i found a guy that ran a ppc agency that sold it for x amount he would be somebody that would be really good to chat with right so yeah the, those people now, are in your find, niche yeah now how do you find these people go on linkedin i don't know um figure out like which ones are like the largest in agencies in, in, in your city, state, wherever you're based in and figure out who those owners are, of those companies. And then, you know, you can send an intro video, you can, I don't know, loom video or send an email, ask them for, for the time, and, you know, just, just be curious. Right. So there's yeah, another, the you join, like, on, yeah, you could join like entrepreneurs organization. Like there's a lot of different things that you can do. Right. 
um, it's just putting yourself like there's a thing, right? Like you don't get lucky. You, uh, you um, put yourself in these better situations that creates more luck. So that by doing that, you know, you're around better people and you know, it's, be it becomes easier to overcome these sort of issues. Right. Yeah. By just actively chasing after it, going out there, putting yourself in front of more people, reaching out to the right people. Yeah. Cause a lot of people, they don't, they also don't want to be humbled by the fact that they make mistakes or they think they know everything. And that was me at one point a while back. Right. So you gotta always figure out like, you know, you're still playing. I, I still feel like I'm playing a small game. Right. So you gotta keep elevating, getting around, you know, better people, better mentors, whatever it is, a better group group or net of entre close knit of, of uh, entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah. I think that's, there's a term for that Dunning Kruger effect or something along those lines where it's like, you learn a little bit about something and you think, you know, everything. And then you get past mm -hmm. that and then like the more, you know, cause obviously you're very successful with your business and you still think like there's lots of things you don't know that you're trying to, trying to learn, um, over time. Uh, and I think people, yeah, paying to, to learn or get in front of those people is pretty important. Like, I'll be honest. I don't think getting the seven figures is that impressive. I think a lot of people can do it, but let's say getting the eight is, is impressive because you need to have that leadership team um, to, to get there and not many, like if you think about it, yes, 1% of, or 4% of businesses in whatever the world or whatever, uh, gets a million a year and then 0 0.01 get to 10 million a year. So, yeah, you know, that to get to that 10 is kind of like the big thing, right? Yeah. That's quite um, a big jump. That's like what one in 400 that hit a million will get to 10 million something like that yeah so and that's all about team right because when, when you when you're tapped out one person can only do so much so when you're tapped out you got to have that team it, it's kind of like you know you're you, i know you play soccer i play soccer like if, if we can put the best players on the field we know we're going to win the game right if you put mediocre players put people out of position then you're probably not going to win the the you know the tournament championship game whatever it is right so yeah the same thing with it with business you got to figure out like you know is this team is my starting 11 good enough right or can i get a better center back can i get a better i don't know salesperson can i get a better cmo can i get a better director account executive whatever it is right yeah makes sense address those fine ways we can see how you can strengthen it up yeah absolutely what um I guess what would be the biggest piece of advice you wish you'd found out sooner that would have helped you like avoid a big mistake, I guess, like something you wish you'd, you found out that you wish you'd found out much earlier. There's better ways to do, to get to a million or two million, whatever it is, than yeah. to just blunt force it, brute force it. Yeah. Better people what focus on building team to help them get there as opposed to just going, doing it all themselves. Yeah. We, I, we still like, like, we scale really fast and very aggressively. So, um, yeah, you know, like kind of, I would actually, if I were to go back, I would actually scale slower, but slower yeah. doesn't mean bad. It, it just means that it, it's better than just going all at once and then getting to a certain point and then falling, right? You know, three, three yeah. steps for, or two steps forward, three steps, sorry, two steps back, three steps forward then then going five steps forward and seven steps back or something right because you can get to a certain revenue point and then just drop and lose clients because you didn't have the right systems or you didn't have the account manager you didn't have enough uh customer people and customer success the sales people or the sales um language and stuff is not um the sales process is not streamlined enough whatever it is right so for, for taking us, the time to scale yeah, it, we just scaled really fast, brute forced it, just focused on getting a lot of clients, client acquisition. Um, don't recommend that. Build, build, you know, slower. Focus on being very intentful. Um, sorry, being, you know, having the right intent and then building that team to, uh, you know, withstand anything. You have that strong foundation. You lose a client, you lose two clients, you lose five clients. It's not a big deal, right? Yeah, you've got the team there to back you up. 
I think the other thing as well is knowing your numbers and data. If you don't like, I know people say that, but like they don't follow that as well. Now I don't mean like check your Stripe or check your QuickBooks. It's like, you got to figure out like everything. And when I mean data, like, okay, so this leads to this action or me spending this amount of time filming videos is going to lead to this amount of people watching it, which will attribute to this amount of revenue or cash. Right. I mean, I'm getting very granular with my data, right? So you yeah. can do that. That also helps a lot. And I can also ease your decision on outsourcing and when to outsource too. Cause then, you, you know, as I was saying before, right. You, you start figuring out what the hell am I spending my time mostly on? Right. Yeah. And I guess then you can find where you can improve and what's, what's lagging, lagging behind and so on. Yeah, exactly. Bit more of a personal question, but you touched on this before. Um, I see you playing a ton of football at the moment. How do you, or <laughs> soccer, as many people would, would say, um, how do you balance doing that as well as running your business at a young age? Is it just those systems or? Yeah, I think um, you got to kind of have balance too. Like um, it's also important that your mental health is important too. A lot of people are fixated on revenue or whatever it is, but you know, getting the jet, the watch, what, whatever it is, like, I don't know what people want cars, but you got to also be mentally in the right place. And for me, when I play soccer, I feel like I don't feel stressed. I feel like it's a good way to kind of let go of, uh, um, you know, get loose, get, get uh, kind of gives me energy, gives me back a lot of energy. So, uh, and it's something I love. I've always played um, football or soccer at a pretty competitive level. So, um, yeah, we're going to see you in Qatar 2022 with the you know Canadian what? team. I, uh, I don't know if I should pay my way in or if I should just sneak <laughs> in the bus and then, you know, pretend I'm a player or but, <laughs> yeah, give it a go. I, you know, yeah, exactly. I mean, I want, it's crazy to see Canada finally qualify. 36 years but yeah it's awesome i think new zealand are playing off against fourth place from the CONCACAF qualifiers soon so i think it's gonna be costa rica we're playing oh, for a spot they should so, they should probably make it hopefully be good to yeah. see now where do you do you like gonna wrap this up soon but where do you want to take your business i guess like do you plan to build it to exit or i know you touched on that briefly earlier or do you just want to scale it into something huge um i'm gonna kind of quote what scott scully said from abstract marketing that answer changes day to day some some days oh yeah. you know what it'll be good cool to sell it for x amount right but i think it's important to continue to build build a better team um again i think of it like soccer right if i can get the best 11 players on that field, on that pitch, my best 11, let's staff, whatever it is, my best team, my internal yeah. team, then, you know, I, I know that you're, I'm putting myself at a better place. And, um, you know, if that option comes, you know, I know, I think there was a company that was talking to us that said they were interested in buying, but I didn't, we kind of just let it go. Yeah, um, not the right stage. Yeah, so just continue to keep keep growing um, the business for sure, um, and yeah, eventually um, I wanted to originally do it as a lifestyle thing. I think when I was a lot younger, but then yeah. I realized that was all bullshit. <laughs> and this is my opinion, right? And I, I didn't really want to do that and lay on a beach and all that stuff. But I'm not a huge person. I'm not a huge. I like traveling, but like I don't like lying on the beach and like doing the laptop lifestyle kind of stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like that yeah. gets pretty boring pretty quickly. I think after a month or two of that, you'd just be wanting to actually do something. Yeah. There's some people I know that like, you know, um, that don't work and they just live off their parents or grandparents. And I, I, I would probably be really bored if I was them. I'm just saying. Yeah. Nothing wrong I think with it'd that, be horrible. But, I think it would just be so boring. 
it's, it's like the same thing of going on a beach in Thailand yeah. and, and pissing off for a few weeks. <laughs> I think it would be even more so boring if you hadn't built the business in the first place that afforded that lifestyle. Like if it's just all handed to you, you didn't have to build anything, you didn't have to learn anything, then you just chill and I think that would, I don't know, some people might think that's awesome, but I feel like you'd feel pretty shit. That, would, that wouldn't be good either for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. Awesome, man. Uh, where can where can people find more about you uh, and your company if they are a business looking for SEO or if they want to find more out about you? Yeah, uh, latchedinc dot com. L a t c h e d i n c dot com. Um, find me on Instagram, Young with Hustle. I don't really um, not huge on the personal brand. Maybe I will try to make that a big focus here yeah um yeah maybe maybe make a youtube channel who knows <laughs> yeah drop what you're up to show people yeah i i probably want to just uh get like a a video team and stuff like that like i'm very like picky me and my business partner we're really picky in terms of like the you know the videos and stuff like that i want it done correctly i don't want to kind of do it the diy and yeah. post on YouTube. I mean, I think that is the way to go about it, um, especially for someone in your position. Like if you get a videographer to come film what you're up to during the day and chop up different bits for social media, for YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, like what Gary Vee does, if you think about it, his, yeah. a lot of his content is recycled. It's not from, um, you know, it's from, I don't know, a keynote. And it's there's so many yeah. snippets that they're just – you know cycle in and their schedule posts for like i don't know you know 30 yeah. 40 days out or whatever it is yeah that's the way to go about it i think for someone that's doing a lot of stuff um already because you don't have to think about scripting out content or anything you can just have some record it have someone chop it up and it's good to go yeah i'll also tell people your viewers that oh yeah going back um uh, don't buy too many courses and don't be a course junkie not a fan of that as well yeah do you just <laughs> find one good one or how do you go about it i think the problem is a lot of people like i'll give you an example a lot of people are talking about oh you know i don't know there's some people online i'm not going to mention the names but they're oh youtube ads is the way to do it or blah 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 um yes that can work if you have a community right if yeah. you don't have a community sell it then how is youtube ads gonna really help and and depends on and your niche too right if you're servicing you're working with b2b companies that are anywhere between let's say 10 to 100 million in revenue like the mid-market level the ceo of those companies aren't going to be on, on youtube and they're going to click click the ad right and find those customers on youtube you're going to find yeah. a kid that's in kansas city that's 27 that's in his parents basement that clicked on the video Right. Yeah. So, um, I think with the the courses, you gotta be very, very careful. So a lot of people, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of people telling you to do certain things, but you know, it's, you gotta find those, those mentors and maybe instead of buying the courses, buy some books, that probably helps. Probably better. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot more to learn from books. I think than a lot of courses out there for sure. Yeah, even for like personal investing, right? Like a lot of people that are now like with crypto and stuff like that, people selling mentorships and yeah, I see that all the time now. It's yield farming and all that sort of stuff. Like I'm just like shaking my head. You know, yeah, if it was that easy, pretty... they wouldn't be selling a course. Yeah, that's what I find, especially with anything, any of the financial product courses, crypto, Forex, it's like they're making silly numbers that just 10 times their, what they're putting in. But yeah. I guess it comes yeah. down to what you were touching on earlier is like, you know, do that inner work to decide like what you want to do, what skill you want to build and what industry you want to go into. And then, like you say, seeking out those right people that have those specific knowledge. And maybe if they have a course, go for it, but not just diving at every YouTube ad you see. Yeah. Like, you know what the definition of a mentor is? The, the definition of a mentor is a trusted advisor. And, and somebody that's a trusted advisor, they they don't sell courses and all that sort of junk. They they've actually been on boards of huge companies, or or they scaled a company in X amount, or they sold a business. They understand how to build, right? 
a lot of people online, they're really good with, um, you know, being in front of the camera and selling their sales. Yeah. Right. Or there's some that are good. I mean, I think Sam Ovens is really good, but he sells online, right? Like, but there's very few people that are actually really, really good. I think Sam Ovens is awesome though. I, I like his stuff. I like his content. Um, I like his approach, but you gotta be again, really careful with who you trust in the internet. And also I think another point I want to mention is take like advice, a little, uh, some advice from everyone. Don't just be like, you know what? This person said that I need to focus on TikTok or YouTube and I'm going to go all in. It worked for them, but is that going to work for you? That's for you to find out. Maybe not. Right. So kind of take that with a grain of salt as well. Cause I literally took that and I went too aggressive to get to, let's say, my first million dollars. And uh, it, it, it was not, I don't, as I said, I don't recommend it. And, and I kind of wish I didn't do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Take a little bit from everyone and experiment and use your own judgment, I guess. So that's kind of what entrepreneurship is about, right? It's about, um, you know, if you don't, um, it's about experimenting and learning. And if it didn't work, it's not a big deal, right? It's, yeah. it's kind of like some, someone told me, a mentor that told me, said, Yondin, think of your business as a mini MBA. And in my head, I'm like, hate school. <laughs> yeah. like, think of it as a mini MBA. Every, all the, the dollars that you waste are the tuition that you are paying. Right? So, yeah. you know, you waste a lot of money, then it just becomes tuition, but it becomes an expensive learning lesson. So I've had some expensive learning lessons too. So that's a good way to put it though. Like, I think you'd get a lot like, you become much better at marketing by spending a hundred K on marketing than a hundred K on a marketing degree. Um, yeah. I'll yeah. I think school is, school is good to like for networking and maybe the notoriety oh, yeah. you went to school for sure. But I mean, um, you know, if you want to go all in on business and just, just do that, you know, it really depends on the, the person as well. But I would say school's good for the network for sure. Yeah. 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 That's what I think a fair few people say that, um, have been or have done well in businesses. It's, it's all about the network, but the yeah. information you can pick up from books or experimenting yeah, like, or. Yeah, exactly. Like if you go to like, you know, Harvard or Stanford or Yale, like a lot of those big companies like Airbnb or whatever it is, they, a lot of those guys, they went to like Stanford or, or Yale or Harvard and you know, they, there's kind of a clique that they form, right. With all these alumni and alumni pe people. Right. So, um, you know, if you're in that circle, then you can get a lot of insight and figure out what they, what they were doing. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Awesome, man. Well, I mean, there's been a ton of, um, valuable insights there. Thank you for coming on. I'll link all your stuff below. If people want to check out your agency, your personal brand, all that stuff will be linked below for people. So, Definitely go check it out. And uh, yeah, really appreciate your time, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me, Josh. It's good. Appreciate it.